do what to do. The New York Times says they have Donald Trump's uh, tax returns for over 20 years. Apparently, by their own admission, he's paid nearly $75 million in taxes. Uh, he's also taken advantage of some tax loopholes that let you uh, offset losses versus gains. Um, and, of course, the left-wing media is going to make this out to be some kind of big thing because he apparently paid $750 last year. And that doesn't mean he paid $750, folks. That means that he had a ton of losses and a ton of gains. And they offset each other. I, I, I hate the IRS. I hate taxes. I hate seeing Al Sharpton, um, one of the biggest tax dodgers on earth, on Morning Joe, talking about Donald Trump's tax returns. So when we're going to get into taxes, we bring in our resident tax expert. My buddy joins us right now, Julio Gonzalez. He's the CEO of Engineered Tax Services. Um, and Julio is on a council that helped advise on the 2017 tax cuts and the Jobs Act. He works closely with the administration. He's, he's, he's one of the cool guys. He's in on all the good stuff. Hey, uh, Julio, how are you, brother? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Even better that we have you here because, you know, I like our audience members to kind of walk away with some education. And... Um, you know, the headline is Trump avoided and evaded taxes, but turns out if you dig in there, he paid almost $70 million and then got oh, take, took advantage of some loopholes that Obama actually put in place, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I would call him tax code versus loopholes, right? I mean, he just follows the tax law and does what he has to do. I mean, he's the one taking the risk, and he's the one getting the tax credits associated with taking that risk. Yeah. And uh, But ultimately, he's providing a lot of taxes, right? He's paying a lot of taxes property taxes, employment taxes, creating a lot of jobs, sales tax. So all these things, when he brings these buildings back to life, create a lot of tax for those communities. Why do they give them those tax incentives? Because those buildings were sitting vacant, not producing any tax for D.C., for Palm Beach. And now he brings them back to life, creates a tremendous amount of employment and tax. And so ultimately, if you look at his tax returns overall, personally and all the companies, I'm sure you'll see there's a lot of tax being paid. Yeah, uh, Julio, let me ask you this. I know you're, uh, you know, dialed into the administration. You help out on a lot of things related to tax and finance and stuff. Why doesn't somebody get together a compendium of all the state taxes, real estate taxes, all the tax, payroll taxes? You know, they, they, they're focusing on his federal tax. Um, they're not talking about all the payroll taxes he paid, all the real estate taxes. I mean, this guy's probably paid uh, a quarter billion dollars in taxes over his life. John, I asked the same question. I mean, why wouldn't we be talking about those things? Just put, someone put a summary together. I mean, clearly, the IRS, the states, they're in his office 24-7. If there was anything going wrong, they would know. They would have known over the last three decades. But it just shows you that there's obviously clear taxes being paid at the local, state, federal level, a lot of taxes. He created that tax base, and people should be just putting a simple chart together showing that. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be good for him to whip out Tuesday night and say, oh, I didn't, I didn't pay taxes. By the way, um, from 1999 to 2019, I paid, you know, $300 million in, in associated taxes. I think that would probably make him look good. But according to what you read, um, and you're an expert on this stuff, you're saying his companies have paid over $100 million um, over this time where they're saying he evaded all these taxes. Yeah, a lot more than Amazon, right? So, again, look at all this tax that he's paying. Look at all the property tax he's creating from an old post office that doesn't, didn't pay any taxes and now is one of the highest taxpayers in D.C., sales tax, employment tax. He's creating jobs. He's creating taxes. And this is why he was giving incentives, because the properties were sitting vacant, doing nothing for the communities. And they begged someone to come in. And who did it better than him? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it seems like no matter, you know, if this guy saved a family from a burning building, they'd probably start accusing him of lighting the building on fire because the, no matter what he does, it seems like, you know, he can't get ahead. Um, but in your view, uh, this New York Times report about his taxes, is this a misleading report? Completely misleading because if you don't see the overall picture of all the corporations and how the taxes are paid and how it all flows through, then you're not getting the total picture. You're getting one snippet, right? They're saying that he paid $750. They're not talking about the hundred millions of taxes paid over the last 
10 decades, two decades, three decades from all his organizations and past his family history. Yeah, and I saw in the article, I read it, I'm, I'm going to read through it again and do some fact checking, but um, way back when The Apprentice really started taking off, Donald Trump paid like $70 million in two years for the $400 million he made through The Apprentice. Exactly. I mean, and again, that was one company out of many companies that he's always creating taxes, he's always creating jobs, he's done it better than anyone. And, you know, for the New York Times to come out and say he paid $750 and he had these expenses, he's just following the tax code. And I guarantee you, if he had done anything wrong on those tax returns, the state of New York, the IRS, who live in his offices, would have, you know, made that very apparent. Yeah, so I mean, the one thing at issue here is they're saying that he claimed an estimated return of $72 million and anything over $2 million has to be reviewed, but the government, I guess, pays it um, and then they do an audit of it afterwards. So turns out that the president wasn't lying either when he said, I'm in the middle of an audit with the IRS, right? They're always auditing him. When you're that big of a company, a big, that big of an entity, the IRS just lives in your office. That's how it goes. And, and so they're there. They're working with his CFOs. They're working with his controllers. Clearly, if anything were ever to be wrong, that would have been that would have come out long ago. And the IRS would be all over it. And clearly, because they're not, it's because everything's going correctly according to the code. Yeah, and you would think um, before he was president, because many of this stuff, much of this stuff was before 2016, you would think, you know, the Obama administration, the Obama, Obama Department of Justice, the Obama IRS, um, and the Obama IRS was going after um, Fox News reporters and auditing them like on a political witch hunt. You would think they would have attacked his, you know, IRS credentials. And uh, apparently, even before he was president, no one accused him of any wrongdoing. Correct. I mean, and again, he's a person, his entities that are always constantly under, you know, audit from the IRS. That's routine. And clearly they keep passing that audit with the IRS. Got it. And there's probably a list longer than my arm of uh, billionaires on both sides of the aisle, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, progressive, um, who take advantage of the exact uh, places in the tax code that Donald Trump took advantage of it, right? No question about it. I mean, obviously, President Trump, the art of the deal, maybe he does it better than everyone else. Maybe that's why he doesn't want to show his tax returns, is to give away his trade secrets, you could say. But no doubt there's everyone on both sides of the aisle. If they're in real estate, they're using depreciation, you're using 1031s to avoid capital gains. You're doing all the things that all of them do in that level. Right. And for people who don't know what uh, 1031 is, if you sell some property... Um, and you reinvest those funds again, then you don't have to pay the capital gains tax at that time, right? That's it. But you're also putting that money to use. You're paying taxes, creating property tax. So there's a lot of taxes being paid. And that's why we uh, allow the 1031s, so that we can keep the economy going. That's so we can keep buying and having sales tax and taxes generate when you're putting money into the economy, not in your pocket. Right, so you take the money, you put it in your pocket, you pay your capital gains tax, and you stick it in the bank, and, and you take that money out of the economy. You do a 1031, you sell something, you take your profit, you buy a few more properties, you soup up those properties, and you start paying more taxes on those, so you're actually putting the money back to work, and that's why the government incentivizes you to roll that into another development or another piece of property, right? Yeah, that's why we have those rules. We want to keep the economy going. And exactly right. I mean, if you can put the money back into the economy, defer the, I mean, you're not getting away from the taxes, you're just deferring it and basically putting that to use, creating jobs, creating other types of taxes, then we have those rules and we have the 1031 rules to create that type of economic activity. All right. Julio, um, I hope you and the family are safe down in Florida. Thank God your governor, I heard, he's opening up the whole state, no masks, indoor dining, everything. So you must be uh, looking forward to getting out and partying again. But thank you, my brother. I appreciate you joining us as always. Happy to be on. Thank you. That's Julio Gonzalez, CEO of Engineer Tax Services. He was on the, uh, the Council of uh, Geniuses that did the uh, 2017 tax cuts with uh, Larry Kudlow, Stephen Moore, and others. And uh, that was another thing that really spurred the economy. So Trump's done uh, 
a heck of a lot for our tax code, a heck of a lot for you small business owners there watching on Biz TV. And um, we're going to do a heck of a lot more liquid lunch when we come back and uh, wrap it up for this Money Monday right after this.